Right, so I've been using this punch now for over a month and I'm super happy with it as I'll go into great detail just now. Now what I have done is I contacted Viva and I said look I'm a YouTuber, I'm going to do a review video on this because I'm really pleased with it. Um, is there any kind of discount you guys can give us for my subscribers? Which I think after this you'll sell some. To which case they said yes. So I actually paid £385 for this. But you guys can now benefit from some decent discounts in the description below. Right, let's go over the details and then I'll show you some footage of what it can do. So it comes with a set of dies starting from 6.5 millimeters. There's a 9 millimeter that is already in it for 8 millimeter bolts. You got 17 millimeters, 13 millimeters and 20.5 millimeters. Now you can buy additional sets of these. Um, you can get slotted ones and square ones and they've got little locating notches to go with it. Uh, there is a link that I'll put in the description to where you can find those. Otherwise, I think just contacting Viva for spare dies, you, they'll get you in contact with the right suppliers as well also. But realistically, these aren't very difficult to make. If you're uh, handy with a lathe, you could get some D2 steel and make these quite easily, I think. So it says the maximum you can cut is six millimeters, but I've actually been cutting eight millimeters, as I'll show you. But firstly, let's see how much it weighs. I've got a bag weigher here, and if I just attach it on, and show you guys, what does that say? I think about 12 kilos, I think, is what that says. So if you're a bit of a wet rag, you don't want to be uh, carting this around all day. But for the rest of us, it just means you don't need to go to the gym so much. Wah! But very briefly, we'll go over some key features. It's got an adjustable backstop here. And if I take this off and show you the depth. And so as far as punching space goes, from the center of the punch to that inside there, that's 40 millimeters. From the center of the punch to the very outside here, that's 30 millimeters. And from the face backwards, that's 17 millimeters. So that is the minimal you can do. Now it's really worth noting early on, uh, if you get one of these and you find it suddenly not going through, it's probably because there's an airlock. Apparently that's a thing with these. And all you have to do is undo this bolt here and add a bit more oil and let it kind of circulate through. Uh, I've just added compressor oil to mine because it's what I've got and it's the same as hydraulic oil. Right, so to date I've punched over 600 holes with it. But let's punch a few more, shall we? Okay, let me show you how I'm using this in a real world situation. So I'm making some fixing plates and I'm gonna punch holes in each corner. And what I've done is I center punch the holes where I want them to be. And then that will actually align with the little divot on the end of the punch, as I'll demonstrate. Just by lifting it up into the punch like so, you can see I've located it there now. Making sure that the, uh, the stoppers here have got a footing either side of the plate because they'll help it release afterwards. Keep in contact with the punch, I'll punch a hole. Like so. And then I'll do the others as well. There you go, a few seconds and all those holes are punched. So if I've got a whole batch of these, this makes this super quick. Right, now I've taken it off the stand when we're back in manual mode. Uh, what I've done here is I've marked a bar in the center so you can see how accurate I'm gonna do this. What I'm gonna do is put it up there and see if I can do it above my head. So the trick is gonna to be to align the divot in the center punch mark, but how easy is that to do above your head? Let's find out. Not bad actually. He shoots, he scores. So the trick to that is to have the punch extended ever so slightly, otherwise it sits too far behind the stoppers here. As you can see, trying to align that on that divot is difficult, but if I just extend it slightly, there you go, that makes it a lot easier. Right, let me demonstrate how I change the dies on this thing. Now it does come with an assortment of Allen keys and wrenches, 
and uh, I'll show you my method of taking it apart. First of all, you've got to loosen the nuts. There's some here either side, and there's some on the top one either side. Next, you want to undo the grub screws, and you want to make sure the punch is all the way back, and that way you can get in this way without having to take the stoppers off. So now, making sure the thing is turned off, obviously, you can pull out your punch, like so. Now, the bottom die is slightly trickier. What I do like to do is just put a bar in the hole at the back and just give it some taps out. There you go. So here's my 9mm punch after 600 holes. She's done all right, I think. There's no real signs of too much wear and tear. Right, let's put the 20 mil in. So one little annoyance with the 20 mil die is that hole there is exactly the same diameter as the exit hole. So you can't tap it out like I just did with the other die. So what I'm actually gonna do is just grind myself a little nick just here so then I can jam a, uh, a wedge in or a screwdriver and try and pry the thing out because that is the only thing, it gets a bit gets a bit difficult to get these out afterwards. So just so you know, what I'm doing, I don't recommend you do, you'll void your warranty, but I'm doing it just because it'll make my life easier. So look, that's all I've done, just so I can get a little screwdriver in there. All right, that's the dies in now. So for demonstration purposes, I'll take all this out now. So first of all, remove the top die, like so. And then I'm gonna wedge my screwdriver in there to get the bottom die out. There we go, a little bit of a faff, but it'll wear itself in eventually and it'll be a lot easier. And just so you know, it has a bit of kickback in it, so I recommend always clamping it down as well. So whilst uh, trying to punch a 20mm hole through 8mm thick steel, I uh, discovered something. We need to take a close look at these dies now and see if you can spot the difference. Especially that one there. Now, can you see how the dies are different height? That is to prevent you from putting steel that's too thick. So I mentioned it before, with the uh, 6mm, you shouldn't put material that is thicker than 6mm in, in it. And uh, they've absolutely assured of that by increasing the size of the die. So I've already been punching 9mm holes in 8mm, and the die that it gave you would allow you to do it. And it's only the... 13 mil and the 9 mil that will allow you then to punch 8 millimeter thick material. The 17 mil and the 20 mil are the same and you can only fit 6 mil into that. For example, this is 6 mil, that will fit. But this 8 mil stock won't. It won't go in there. So actually, I think that's an excellent fail safe. They've actually designed it in that you'll not overdo the punch, which I think is very good. But anyway, while we're set up, I might as well show you what it's like punching a 20 mil hole, and then I'll show you my last conclusions. Ooh, yeah! Now, something I do find fascinating with this is the way they have shaped the die here. And you can see it almost folds the steel in half, which reduces its cross-section, which makes it slip out really easy. So the regular watchers out there to my channel will know that I have a tendency to modify things. So what am I gonna do with this, you might say? Well, I think the main thing is to make a new stand and have adjustable depth stops so I can have material going in. If I wanna punch holes at a certain length across a bar, I might have like a peg bar that I can adjust and have some bump stops on there. Uh, electrically, I think I might get one of those 240 volt foot switches and then have this on permanent on and have it operated then only with the foot switch. Probably a plug in one, so all I've got to do is plug it into the foot switch and I think that would be fantastic. So lastly, I'm always trying to find the best deal on the greatest equipment that I can get for the workshop. 
That way I'm keeping my costs low and my profits high. And any deals that I can negotiate, I'll always put those in the description. So until next time, I'm Joshua Delisle, the designer blacksmith, and happy forging a life worth living. See you later. Bye-bye.